Whenever I'm photographing an object, I want to make sure that I'm taking more photographs than I'll ultimately use in the end. I usually try to take 10 or 15 images from every angle that I think that I might use. That way I can choose the best image and I'm not going to have to compromise my final result. I photographed this object using my iPhone, so the first step is to turn on my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on my cell phone and my Bluetooth on my laptop and then airdrop the photos to my laptop. You then want to go into the downloads folder on your laptop, copy all the images that you just airdropped to your laptop, and then paste them into a new folder on your desktop. So I labeled mine Starburst Wrapper Chain. Then you can highlight all of the images, right click, and select Open with Preview. That way you can easily scroll through all of the images and see them in a full screen mode so that you can select the best ones. I needed to get these images ready for a call for entry deadline that was approaching that evening. So I still had one area on the necklace that I needed to go back and fix later. You can see it's a really obvious link in the necklace that's um, I just kind of put together to fasten the necklace. So I want to make sure that the final images that I choose don't have that link as the focal point. So what I'm doing here is going through the remaining images and deleting any images where there's an obvious flaw in it, where maybe that bad link is the focal point or most of the object isn't in focus. So you can see now where it's helpful to give yourself some buffer room on the outside so that you can trim down that composition or crop it so that the object is always the focal point. Um, but really don't pay too much attention to deleting images where you think there's like a wrinkle in the background or shadows um, or where you can see the sides of the uh, little stage that I set up because we can fix most of that in Photoshop. So I've edited my images down to six that I thought could work, but I want to bring them into Photoshop to see which ones are going to be the best. So once Photoshop is open, I'm going to do File Open, go into my desktop folder, select all of the images and press Open. And that's going to open each individual image onto its own separate Photoshop tab. So I have my first photo pulled up and the easiest adjustments to make are under the image dropdown. There's auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. So you kind of just use your best discretion to see if these improve your image or not. So image tone and contrast worked really well and image color did not. So I'm just going to do edit step backward to reverse that move. My favorite easy adjustment is the camera raw filter, which helps you adjust your white balance. So just go into filter drop down and then select camera raw filter and it's going to open up your image into a different screen. So most of the time when you're photographing, the camera will pick up some of the undertones of the ambient light. So a lot of times that'll show up as kind of a yellow or blue undertone. So white balance is a tool that helps you correct any of those light impurities. So once you're in the camera raw filter window, at the top of your screen, you're going to see two eyedroppers. And if you hover over the first one, it's going to say white balance tool. So select that eyedropper, and then you're going to pay attention to these three numbers. See, as you move your eyedropper across the screen, those numbers are going to change. If you're in a color, they're going to be really far apart, but the closer you are to pure white, the closer the numbers are going to be together. So just start moving that eyedropper cursor around your image and try to find the spot in your image where the numbers are closest together, and then you're just going to click. If you have a big white balance issue, the adjustment is going to be really stark. But because I've corrected some of those tonal issues already, uh, on my image, the difference isn't that drastic. Once your white balance is corrected, you can go in and toggle the other adjustments and make really small adjustments on your image. So I wanted mine to be a little bit more exposed and my whites to be a little bit whiter, but you really want to stay as true to the original image as you can because you don't want your photograph to look 
different than the actual object, and you also don't want your object to look overprocessed. So once you're happy with your adjustments, you can just press OK, and then you're going to go back to the original Photoshop screen, and it's going to pull up uh, your image with all of the adjustments that you just did in the Camera Raw filter. So now that my color is corrected, I need to go in and fix a couple little flaws in the image. Um, this is actually a flaw in the necklace chain. You can see that there's a little bit of powder coat that's chipped off, so I definitely need to replace that link after this so that my object matches my photo, but I can quickly um, fix this using the lasso tool. So select the lasso tool from your toolbar, and then I'm going to carefully draw around the little tiny area of peeled paint that's extending past my link. And then I'm just going to basically delete that. So once it's selected, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to make that the same color as the background. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, get a sample of the color of the background, and then go into Edit, Fill, and select Color. Then I can go over to my color swatch, press the color of the background, and press OK. And then the part that's inside of the lasso is going to become the color that I selected with the eyedropper. Next, I need to fix the area on the actual link. So I'm going to do the same thing and carefully go in with the lasso and try to select the area that's a different color. Then I'm going to do the same process and do Edit Fill. But this time I'm going to do Content Aware, which is an awesome tool if it works. Um, and it's going to kind of use smart technology to make the area inside the lasso match the area um, around it. So it's not a perfect tool, so you can see that it made part of my link white. So I'm going to go in and do the process that I did the first time and uh, select the color of the link with the eyedropper tool, then use the lasso tool again and carefully select the area that's the incorrect color. Um, that was too difficult for me to use a free lasso, so I selected the polygon lasso um, option and that allowed me to make a straighter line. So now I'm selecting the area that has the white in it and I want that to match the cherry red of the other part of the link. So go into edit, fill again, select color, and then select the red that's already in your color swatch that you did from your eyedropper and it's going to match the rest of the chain. So now that I'm satisfied with my color corrections, I want to zoom out and crop the image to the view that I want. So you can just select the cropping tool from your standard toolbar, and then at the top there's drop down options so that you can select uh, common ratios for cropping. Um, if you wanted to do something different, that's fine, but I wanted to keep mine a standard ratio. Once you're satisfied with your cropping view, you can just press enter and that will secure your crop. Once my image is cropped, the last step is I want to make my image a manageable size. So I'm just going to go into image, image size, and I made my image uh, five inches for the width. Always make sure that your units are correct. And then I changed my resolution to 300 because that's generally the resolution quality that people ask for if you're sending people images or if you're submitting an image for a call for entry. Once you're ready to save, you're going to go to File, Save As, and you can save your file type, any title that you want, but I generally will save one as a JPEG and then one as a Photoshop file so that I can go back and edit that Photoshop file if needed at a later time. I hope you enjoyed my video and thanks for watching.